Alright, we are setting up to paint some butterflies, wet on wet. Um, and I want to show you a, a technique that I use for um, painting in, uh, getting a wet wash on something without having to wet the paper first. Paper towels out. I always have one in my hand. I am constantly drying and re-wetting and drying and re-wetting my brush. Okay. So I am wetting all my paints just in case so that they are ready to go when I need them. I love having um, all the colors, you know, everything available to me when I want it, and I love being able to see it as well. Because if it's in a tube and, you know, in a in a box, um, I don't, you know, remember what color I have. So I need to, um, I need to see them. All right. Paper towels in my hand. Brushes in my hand. We're using a number 10 Lowell Cornell Ultra Round beautiful series of brushes they come to an incredible point and they hold quite a bit of water we have a number of them 14 12 uh, i've got a six and i think there's a four around here somewhere i often do not need to use the smaller brushes because the uh larger ones uh the the points are so uh tight and nice that uh, I don't need a smaller brush. I can use the larger ones and so hold more water right in my uh, in my paintbrush. Um, you know what? I think we're going to try and get a little color going here. I've got some dioxazine purple, right? Incredibly strong color. So my go-to routine is to wet my brush, then actually remove some of the water from the base so that I have plenty of water in my brush, but not so much uh, that it's dripping and out of control. And what I'm trying to do is to create a, a very wet bead line of uh, color along the whole outside of my uh, shape, whatever shape it is I'm going to do, you know, and I can do the whole thing, but I certainly don't have to. I can stop wherever I want, but what I'll do is, oops, come on, we'll do this one shape here, you know, you don't have to keep everything in the same, uh, the same direction same you don't have to keep everything in the same orientation right if you're left-handed right-handed whatever move things around so it's easier to do the brush stroke you want okay uh, as I go through I am really uh, paying attention to the fact that I don't want this edge to dry out so before I start the next one, I'm going to come in here, right? My paper is dry, and I am going to just sort of touch some of the edges. Uh, if I, uh, you know, because my paper is dry, I can very easily leave uh, white without having to mask anything. Um, but just by, you know, going through and adding a little bit of water here, I kind of keep this line from forming on the paper where I don't want, you know, I don't want it to form a line. I'm trying to get a nice soft wet on wet look here. But I can certainly also come in and maybe, you know, do some of these white lines by just leaving my uh, dry paper. 
some have air in it, some of it's some of it's wet, some of it's dry. And let's see. Okay, now I'm gonna clean my brush once more. And this is just water, and I am coming in and connecting and dropping in more water. Uh, because what I'm looking for is a very irregular wash. Right? I don't I'm not trying to get this to dry evenly. I want to have you know some blooms. We'll probably introduce another color in here. But what I love about doing that bead line uh, around the outside is that you the um, the paint kind of collects at that edge. Uh, you know you can add more water and, and thin it out but you always really end up with a nice dark watercolor edge on the outside and a, and a very smooth one too, because, you know, I, <laughs> I do not work on smooth paper. I like rough paper and paper with a texture, and this helps me um, get a nice hard edge around things in spite of that. So I get a nice, um, crisp line as well as a beautiful texture because of the uh, textured paper. Be careful. You can see. All right. Uh, you know, I can go back and darken it up. Let me just take a little out of my brush. And that way I have a control over where I want this to go. I right, get a little extra water up here. Oh, a little dry over here. I wasn't kind of paying attention. So just touch it. And up here too. I gotta go quickly get that. This is not something you can do and then go answer the phone. You have to um, you have to finish. Right, you have to lay all your water down and then then you can walk away. So, um, it's important, better if you don't walk away, because now we're going to watch this evaporate. I'm actually taking a little water off. Um, this also takes the paint off, so we don't always want to do that. see what we can do here. I've got a little cerulean and um, show you the difference on both sides here. So one one side, this guy here is very wet and so the you know the color is moving um, fast and kind of all over the place. This side of the butterfly has kind of started to dry a little. It's not as shiny and we need to, we need terms for this. It's in the um, like a, when you're making candy, hard ball, soft ball stage, that kind of thing. So we've got, you know, as your paper dries, you have more control over adding uh, detail that will still bloom, but not as far take some water out. I can even do it on a slightly wetter area. I have to have lots of paint and um, I because I'm, I'm putting down a fairly dry brush, right, I'm painting dry on um, wet watercolor. I'm uh, able to kind of control the line a little better. See, sometimes it's too late. So I come back in. So I'm, it's, I'm very conscious of how much water is in my brush as I'm painting here. You know, I can keep it doing this until, until I decide to stop. Um, you know, if I want to add a bloom, because we're working in a loose watercolor 
it's important for me to wait a little while. If I have too much water, you know, I'll introduce a bloom, and I'm not gonna do that right now, but um, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm gonna wait for this to dry a little bit more. And then we'll put it in. Let's go for a little pink here. So when I mix my paints, I want to also make sure that they're not very diluted. All right, I still have, if I want, I need some, I need some more intense color when I'm painting wet on wet because the, the paint is, uh, you know, diluted. Again, it's uh, by the, uh, the water on the paper. So if I can take my time with this while it's drying and I'm watching and still painting, I can come in and uh, add uh, more color to this. Uh, it, you know, watercolor dries lighter, so it's nice to be able to kind of add your coloring and, uh, and get it almost the same way, you know, almost almost looking the same as uh, when it's finished, if I'm patient enough to keep adding more color. But this is a long process. Um, you know, you have to really wait. Let's see if we can get some pink around that blue there. And, you know, eventually you'll get to a stage where the paper is too dry and you're just laying color on top of uh, what has already dried. So in that case, then you need to go back. Paint all over me. You know, we'll, we can add a little uh, more water here. This is still, still, still wet enough for me to work. So I am going to add barely touching the paper here. I'm going to add more color. And I'm, you know, being careful not to add more water. So once I get it, well, let's put a little extra dark in here. Okay, back to my purple. And before this dries too much, I can come in. What I'm, tr what I want is is for it not to have dried so uh, smoothly and uh, you know uniformly. I'm looking for some lights and darks. So I'm just going to drip a little extra in, a couple edges, and you see I'm not getting a bloom because I'm not introducing so much water that will have a a big drop at the end here, you know, a big droplet of water. Uh, that's not to say we won't do that as well um, in a minute or two. Uh, this is extremely meditative. You just sit and watch the paint while it's drying and add more color as you go. Decide what you wanna do. And um, all right, let's double check, make sure it's not too wet here. You try it, put it down, see, you know, it's still moving some of the paint around. So it's a little wet. Let's get more paint and less water. Here. So now when I put this down, it barely moves at all. That's pretty cool. So I can get, you know, an exact soft line where I want it. Here. Kind of introduce that color and it stays, um, can stay in place. It is now, it is still a little shiny, hardly, hardly at all. Um, I have to figure out what stage that is. <laughs> It's like being at the beach and you're adding water to the sand, right? And the sand just soaks up the water and 
right into the ground and none of it stays on the surface of the water of the of the sand right so that's what you're looking for pretend you're at the beach Maybe. okay so starting to dry not shiny anymore so if I drop some you know fairly small water drops in here I've introduced a lot more water than has you know than the rest of the piece here and so it's going to move out into the rest of the area I can even pull it up if I want so I've dried that and now I'm adding I can add more water you can even just keep adding the water in the same exact spot uh, and you can play with the bloom a little by giving it a few areas to move into and you also can watch that so you can pull it off as it dries if you want if you're trying to get trying to get a lighter color on the inside here but we've got a beautiful bloom happening over here not so much on this side, so let's add another drop or two over here. Get that to push out more. Right? All you need is more water. And um, and as we talk, this is this is still drying, so we're definitely going to get a kind of a bloomed edge right around here. And that's how that's what happened with these guys. Right? I just kind of kept adding water. Most of, all of this was already dry. And uh, I took the color off as the bloom was happening. Um, yeah, that is my trick. And then you get, you know, these beautiful textures in here. And these are pretty small, so let's try another one. I've been working on a picture where we put a few of them in. Now this, you know, uh, you want to work flat. This is not something that you are uh, using gravity um, because we don't want to push the water around. We want it to stay. We're trying to we're trying to master the water, right? You have to let go of control in watercolor, and then eventually, uh, once you figure out how dry and how wet to work, then you can you get a little bit more control back. All right, I put some paint on and then I drop a little water in. Just because, just because. Ah, we need another one, kind of overlapping. Maybe he goes underneath. Can't see. All right, let's try. Um, let's try a yellow. Uh, I always have usually two containers of water too, as well, so that I'm not using, uh, you know, um, if I'm working with a very light color, I need to make sure that my water is clean. So let's go over this one. Still working with that very wet bead of paint. Come back and hit it off just in case it's starting to dry. It depends on, uh, you know, how much moisture is in the air uh, as far as how quickly things dry. Well, let's see. Over? All right, over. Okay. I'm going to clean my brush. And now I'm going to come back and just hit that outside edge. Just gradually move bit closer into the middle. A little more water. You know, some colors move a, a lot uh, and others move uh, not as much. Just depends on their mineral 
content. But usually you still get that darker edge on the outside. Yeah, okay, so this is quite wet. I can decide if I want to put another color on now or wait a little bit. Let's try a Oh, I went out of room. Oh, no, we've got one last little thing. Okay, a little bit of orange. Yeah, let's see. Let's just try some. Very wet, right? Things are going to go everywhere. Going to move. <laughs> they might totally disappear. We don't know. We'll see. Uh, so this is the experiment part, right? Get used to working really wet as well. And, I, you know, I do not scrub. I, I basically just drop color in uh, while paint is drying. Or water, paint, yeah, water. It is paint. Um, and then we watch this, right? Uh, so if it's very wet, you end up with these kind of crazy little firework-looking things. And as that starts to dry, we'll see if we can add a couple more things to it. Um, trying to find like a family of colors that would work there. With the purple and the pink. Maybe let's go back to our pink. Can I get enough of that pink? Okay. You know, we're making kind of uh, Not scientifically correct butterflies today. Yeah, it's kind of a pretty the opera pink and that yellow always makes a beautiful kind of sunset color. All right, very wet, right? Virtually no control over anything. We've almost lost what I put down already. Um, but I've still got my uh, yellow edge. I'm going a tiny bit more pink in here. Okay. Still, I put it down fairly wet, so it's going to keep moving. So I will watch this now and see how it does as it's drying. I can, you know, use a dry brush and pull some up. That takes my color off, though. So I think I might leave it. Just want to also um, correct any outside edge that looks a little wonky, right? Not as smooth as it should be. So I can come in and fix things. Let's do a few little tiny antennas. That guy. No, perfectly fine to leave some white. or not. I always forget. And then we just watch that one dry. But what we're getting is, you know, this color is drying on top of the other, the, the butterfly, the blue one that was put on first. So we're getting this glazing going on here with these colors are not mixing, but just sitting on top of the colors that we've already put down. Um, and you get a real almost like a stained glass look with that effect. Yeah. So, still too wet. Very, very shiny. All right, it's almost buckling a little bit. The nice thing about painting a little at a time is your whole paper doesn't buckle all at once, right? So you're working with just a small area. So let's check this guy out. It is buckled but dry, wet in the center. And uh, this is a good time for me to add uh, something back in there. Let's see, what do we want? <laughs> oh yeah, she probably has too many color choices, right? That's the problem. Let's see, oh, I don't know. Let's just drop a little extra water in. When I put the water in, you can see it move, it's, um, 
it just soaked down into the surface of the paper again. Right? So that means we've still got our bloom going. It's still quite wet. Uh, but this, uh, what I was able to do by adding the water is to kind of clean out the, <laughs> the center of the bloom. Get as much of the purple off as I can. And that way the next color I put down doesn't uh, mix with the purple. So uh, like maybe we can try a little yellow in there. Let's see. Right, we know this is a complementary color, so it uh, would normally turn to mud. But because we've taken off a lot of the purple, I've got a little white here to, that I can work with. And I can keep adding, you know, I don't have to go out to the edges. I can just add the extra paint and color in the, in the middle and the water will move. Oh, of course, I should just said that and here she is touching the edge, right? So play with the edge. If you want to add a little more water on the edges, it will move further. tiny little bits at a time and so that you can start seeing the the fissures and the you know the <laughs> the eddies of the water as it's moving right it just uh, water always uh, moves in the same way right it makes those those kind of tendrils of um, little rivulets falling coming out and so I've got that happening here too um, and then we're gonna watch this as it's drying and I'm pretty happy because it looks kind of cool. Um, I love this little bit right here. And unfortunately, I'm going to add a little extra water right there. Which I probably shouldn't have done. Uh, here's some more yellow. I'm going to take water out. And just make sure it's coming out nice and bright. If I want, I've got a little Naples yellow here is slightly opaque and if I just touch a little bit of that here I can try and make that a tiny bit brighter but that's all I'm gonna do we're just gonna watch that go mm, that looks awful cool you know I don't want to work on the drier edges out here because I'll lose my bloom as soon as I wet these again my bloom will move further out and I'm trying to keep that crazy edge going. I don't want to add more water either because I don't want to dilute the yellow. I'm happy with how that's drying. Okay, so Coolaroo. Let's go back and see what this guy's doing. Uh, also, not uh, shiny anymore. Still you know, looks like the sand soaked into the, the water soaked into the sand. And now I can use, let's try putting in a little dry, dry brush here, right? Let's see what things move. So uh, they move a little, right? Not a lot. It's drying a little bit more over here. What I do is just touch it and, and double check, right? So it is still moving, but they're not moving everywhere, right? My color kind of blended here. And these guys are staying more in place. If I take more water out of my brush, I can have more control. And get some new lines. Let's see, make a, let's make a little green body here. So I barely just touch the surface. Right? Just kind of add a little bit at a time. You can always add more water, but it's hard to take the water off once it's on there. You can take it off. You just end up taking the color off, too. Yeah, nice. That's staying right in place. Maybe we try, let's try a few little veins, green veins. Uh, 
kind of this side is a little drier, you see, so those are really in place. Try and get my hand out of the way. Cool. I can patch up that edge later. If it's not moving enough, I can take a clean brush and just hit the green edge, right? Just Tap the edge of the green, and that will get it to move a little further out. And my green is getting a little bright there, so let's tone him down a little bit. Just a tiny little bit of blue, and I tried to take most of the water out. Ah, see how fast it went? It moved. It's moving just a little too much water on there. It's moving less, right? And if I put just a tiny bit in, right, maybe that will stay a little better. Okay, and we'll watch that. We'll double check. It's moving a little bit faster than I wanted. Uh, in that case, maybe I pick up a little bit of green so it doesn't move quite so much. And what's great is you can do, uh, you know, many at a time while one is drying or you're waiting for it to get to a certain uh, evaporated state. Then you can go to another one. Happy with that. That was, that was awesome. We should do some flowers that way too, huh? But uh, let me show you this. We can, uh, I can add some color back into this bloom if I want to. My, right now, this guy is all dry. So let's take a little... Mm, let's do the yellow because it's going to look so nice on the green. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paint, you know, a little, a little kind of where the bloom was. Just a little bit. Then I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to touch around the yellow to kind of pull it out to the rest of this uh, bloom area. So I'm gonna, just going to follow the bloom, follow the bloom line. I'm barely touching the paper. Just kind of filling that in there. Ooh. Okay, let's try this one. Now you just have to make sure you've got enough paint to keep going here. Just put some on as long as it's wet. Paper's dry. Okay, clean water. And now we're just gonna tap it out. We're gonna pull the color around to where we want it to go. Just following along that line of uh, where the water stopped in the previous layer. And this is going to look like I've introduced them at the same time. Similar to this. This is much easier <laughs> because I don't have to worry about the colors mixing. And I can come back and you know make it as vibrant as I want. So this is how you get the control back, right? This guy is pretty much out of control. The only control I have is how much, uh, you know, how dry and wet the paper is. This one I've decided, you know, to change this bloom from white to yellow. And so I am slightly in charge by being able to kind of manipulate where the color goes. That's pretty darn cool. Yeah. So, you know, here's one that's very soft right now. 
and I can, uh, let's see how, how can we possibly fix that guy? Let's think about this. Um, I've got it. let's get a little cerulean out. Let's see what we can do. There he is, where is he? There he is. Um, okay, I'm going to add a new bead line of color. So this is blue, which is turning green, darker green. Let me put that on. And then maybe, maybe we'll just wait. I'm going to dilute that a little bit. And I'm going to follow, maybe we'll put on a few more lines. Anyway, I'm just connecting the wet line over here with the, the other wet line in this area. And we'll see if those lines can connect a bit. Okay, so if they don't quite, just add a little more water. Like this one again, the paper's dry. Uh, and let's take it a little further now. Maybe I'll make that the body color. Okay, so here's my blue bead line. I'll mix up a little more paint. Okay, kind of fix that area there. Drop more color in all the way around the wet edge. Drop a little water in the, the wet edge up here so it moves a little further. Okay, and then let's just try this. This is, again, just water for the moment. So I'm, I'm kind of creating the, uh, the lines that the paint is going to flow through. Right. And then I can hold that down if I want. Right, and the great thing is that I've got all that gorgeous color underneath that I'm going to see through because I'm putting on just a very uh, thin layer of color. Okay, let's go try and see if we can fix this. Maybe. So I can change things as I want. Uh, drop in a little more water and hopefully, oops, a little, a little sloppy there. All right, so we messed up a line. Let's see what happens. It's probably going to take a lot of color off. So I've just blotted that one area. You know, and if it's not dry, dry-ish, it will bleed more. But it looks like it did okay. So if you make a mistake, you can always, you can always try and fix it. Yeah. All right, let's get a few. wing. Yeah, I like how that looks. Let's turn this over. <laughs> End up back in the same spot. Let's see if we can get this side. What was I using? Ah, I was using yellow. Hard to tell. Ugh, got a lot of green in my yellow right now. Oh dear. Just dry your brush off and then just let your paintbrush soak up the green. You see it's gotten in there too much. Okay, a little more water. No, I was using blue. Okay, this is, we're still, uh, still have pandemic brain here. Okay, back to, back to blue. All right, let's see, we'll do the same thing. We're gonna do a nice big, nice bead line, tiny, tiny bead line. Just follow it around. You can go as slow or, you know, as you want. The slower is way more fun. Um, so if I just use water to kind of 
connect these guys. I wish it would help if I looked at a butterfly wing. Huh? I'm just going from memory right now. Okay, and I'm putting in a little bit more water to get this all to move a little further along. Right? And I'm trying to re rehydrate those uh, lines that started to dry. through with water, so just make sure that none of it's kind of stopped. It's okay if it stops, I and mean, you'll end up with a, you know, a bloom line, which is um, fine also. Anyway, I love this because it lets me have a lot of control over some very loose water, you know, and I, I love that uh, the way watercolor dries when you um, do not fuss with it, when you just let the water do the work. And so I'm just directing where I want the water to go. By putting this in. No, I'm not, um, I'm not trying to make them perfect, it's okay. Cute. But, you know, once you get something, uh, you know, drying that's as gorgeous as that, you, d you don't touch that, right? That's a really amazing one, so we're going to let that happen. So a lot of this is, you know, knowing when to stop and knowing... Uh, uh, observing, observing while you're painting to just see uh, what the water's doing and to take your time, you know, really meditate on how it's going. Um, cool. You know, if I want to create another a bloom now, I can add some more water here and that's going to push my color around uh, because the paper was not quite dry yet. I mean, it's, it's close. Getting there. And this looks like it's drying a little too uniformly, so let's add a little extra water here. In those wet lines that are starting to dry. So I'm doing my best to, you know, only add water where it's already wet. And that's going to let those lines move around a little bit. If my brush is too dry, it will soak up the water, which is uh, another technique, but not one I want right now. Yeah, it's fun. And, you know, again, I'm still getting those nice, hard, dark edges, which for some reason really do it for me. I love that. You know, even a pale color can give you the hard edges on the outside. Let's try one of those. So put those somewhere where you can see them as they're drying, just in case. Uh, let's, let's get this guy over here and see if we can get a nice pale look on that one. You know, turn it upside down, have a look at it from that angle. Color-wise, what do we want? Mostly only into purples and blues, so. Ugh. Well, we have so many blues. Let's give it a couple others a try here. Hmm. This is our pompadour, it's called. It's a little opaque. because it's a small one. Okay. 
Okay, so clean the brush out. <laughs> and then add the water. Uh, you know, and uh, just watch that line. Sometimes it's okay to have the, I mean, you don't really want that hard a line. We'll get this to move a little bit more. So I'm just going to come back in and kind of wiggle that uh, inside edge a little. Get that pigment to move a tiny bit more than it is right now. You know, the key is just to be delicate with the paper. You don't want to be scrubbing so much that, so, you know, you lose the pulp of the, of the watercolor paper is, is coming, coming up. So I don't usually use the um, scrubber brushes. I find if I'm okay, I can, I can usually get it with just a regular brush and uh, just dabbing it a little bit. But let's add a little more water in the middle here. Let's see if we can get that water to push out to the outside edges. You know, you can do this multiple times too. You can uh, put down a very wet layer and let it dry and then do another layer on top. Um, some people do multiple glazes. They just go over and over on their uh, paintings. So the, you know, the fun thing is there's a million ways to do watercolor, right? Anyway, okay, let's see. We'll, uh, <laughs> if you're impatient like me, uh, you're gonna soak this water up. I'm gonna make a little X there in the middle. All right, so I'm, I'm kind of, I twirl my brush a little bit and that lets all the bristles get all the extra water, and then we're gonna we're gonna drop it in again, and that's gonna push some of the more pigment out. So we'll end up with it. You know, it's gonna be almost white in the middle, and with this very delicate light blue edge around the outside. in with that edge. The key is not to go over the edge. All right, so I scrubbed a little more. I'm going to just put a little more water in. My water's not that clean. Okay. Well, we just let him dry, and then we'll see what to do with him next. Fun.